second. And I have to say that my, my, my internet, it always happens for some reason, this last two days is unstable, okay? <laughs> the, most, the two most important days, but what can, I, what can I do? So, okay, so let's start with the, with the first presentation. This would be project 10 uh, with the title, Verifying Interaction Among Different Types of Discrete Events by Using the Multivariate Hoax Process. This was done by, uh, thank you, uh, Carlos Cáceres Velázquez and the supervisor uh, were uh, Jan Can Swan uh, and uh, Max Werner. So Carlos, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So my project is the number 10, as was said, verifying interaction among different types of discrete events by using multivariate focus process. And in particularly, we will focus on epidemic type aftershock sequence model that is a kind of focus process. So this is the agenda. Let me start. A focus process help us to understand temporal point process, in particularly, um, it can be so uh, or characterized by its conditional intensity, that is the expected number of events that happen in a certain time interval, given a history of this uh, point process. Uh, in particularly, Hawke's process of the point process as a cell exciting, and in this sense, uh, can be the process can be thinking as a Carlos. Yes. Wait a second. Sorry, Carlos. sorry, Carlos. I will mute. Yeah, go ahead, Carlos. Thank you. <laughs> yes, don't worry. So uh, the conditional intensity can be thought as a bad one rate and a triggering rate. So this bad one rate is that uh, the the normal uh, behavior of the point process, and this point process could produce some uh, some offsprings. And this behavior uh, can be seen in this diagram. So we ob observe a temporal point process and the point process have a background behavior. And the, these background events can produce some offsprings and such offspring can produce another of offsprings. In the final uh, stage, uh, the focus process, we will have uh, a level background process and triggering uh, events. So we also can extend the, the temporal process to include the spatial uh, characteristics. So in this sense, we will have the expectation number of events that happens in a temporal time interval and in a spatial uh, interval. So, and all of this is uh, given a certain history time. So. In the case of cell exciting spatial temporal, the triggered function will depend on the special uh, coordinates and temporal uh, coordinates. And for simplicity, it's recommended to, to split such function as a separable function in space and temporal uh, characteristics. So the time, the spatial temporal form, uh, let us introduce a market uh, characteristics. So we will have that for each event, we'll have a special uh, coordinate, temporal coordinate, and also a market coordinate. And example of this would be the earthquakes that they have uh, epicenter uh, time of occurrences and the magnitude. So this is a kind of market temporal, uh, spatial temporal uh, Hawke's process. And in particularly, we call multivariate point process for when the mark space is a finite set of market uh, possibilities of each event. Examples of multivariate point process are, for example, crime reports. So in police station can classify different crime reports and they will have different uh, coordinates and also in time. So we can uh, produce a model with these kind of hocus processes. Also for social media, when we post something, it will have a location and a temporal location, and maybe different persons could retweet or reshare in this in the sense that Hocus process could uh, simulate the behavior in in social media. Also for pandemic situation, 
like this one that is present, had can be modeled with host process and as said, as I said, uh, seismicity activity could be modeled with host process. So the main idea is based on the waiting time of uh, these processes. So the cumulative probability distribution of uh, waiting time that the next event happened from certain time t uh, can be described by the equation four. And so it's conditional, its probability density function will be the function five. Also, the survival function is introduced, that is the equation six, and is the probability that an event from t on, from the waiting time uh, greater than u, and also we can introduce the hazard function, that is the probability that the next event occurs between time u and u plus a dif dif differential u, uh, measured respect to a probability waiting time that is greater than uh, time waiting time u. So it can be seen as equation seven, and from equation seven we can solve in order to have equation eight. So the survival function is related to the hazard function by last equation, this last equation. So then given a process N in a te temporal interval S T, we can introduce the likelihood function L as the joint probability density of waiting time to each of these events. So this likelihood function can be seen as the product of the probability for each event in an order, uh, in temporal order. So we, we have the multiplication of these, uh, the products of these probabilities uh, and can be written, written as a density probability function of each one of them, of them. And finally, we could obtain the equation nine because by definition, the hazard uh, function is related to the probability density function that I told you in the last slide. So, the hazard function is basically the definition of the inten conditional intensity rate. So we can find equation uh, nine in terms of the conditional intensity rate. And so the likelihood function, we can take the, the logarithm that is a, a very usual way to, to use this uh, function. And it will help us to find unknown regular parameters uh, that will be introduced or used for the model of our Hochkos process. And we will use the, the very use maximum likelihood estimate in order to find some uh, parameters of the model. So in the case of the spatial time ITAS model, that is epidemic time aftershock sequence, uh, suggests that the intentional conditionality rate could be thought as the mu, that is the background rate, and also we will have the contribution of the triggering uh, function. So in this case, uh, the spatial background rate uh, is thinking as a, as a rate of time homogeneous Poisson process, and the triggering function is the contribution of the seismic hazard uh, due to triggering effects of the of each one of earthquakes. So the explicit functional form uh of this uh conditional intensity is in this is presented in this slide so in this model we will uh interested in find the parameters new a c alpha p d q and gamma that are positive parameters and u is a unknown special function that we will uh, find by this uh, model so we can find uh, the probability that the events uh, was generated by the background process and is it will be the relation 12 and the probability of if the event is triggered from previous event that will be described by the equation 3 13 so the hocus process suggests an iterative uh, process until we will find a certain convergence in order to find uh, the, the the values of the parameters that we, we, we want to, to find. So in this sense, uh, we decided to apply this uh, model to Mexico seismicity 
So we use the Mexico catalog in order to 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 apply this uh, this model. Um, the New Mexico catalog can be described by the the Gutenberg Richter law that and we describes the the frequency cumulative of the earthquakes, but the according to, to the magnitude. So as we can see, we have a uh, uh, we find what from with from what magnitude the catalog considered complete, and from this uh, plot we can see that the maximum frequency is close to 3.8 so we consider just magnitudes uh, greater than this magnitude that will be considered as the completeness magnitude for the catalog so when we applied the Hawkes um, the ETAS model we find different uh, step of iterations and we can see that the convergence of these parameters uh, is observed fastly so the ETAS model is a, a good uh, good proposal in order to find uh, the the parameters of the model used in order to, to find the triggered uh, triggered function and the background rate. With this, we can find the probability that the events are of background. So, in this sense, we can separate the events of the background and also what events were produced by by other and the classical case is the after shove sequences of main uh, earthquake so also we can find the probability that an event uh, j is triggered by even i and so we will find uh, this uh, matrix of the probability transitions so we can represent this uh, this behavior with complex networks because a complex network could be uh, identified at, by an adjacency matrix. In this sense, we can set a different threshold in order that the the ear the earthquakes will be connected by the probability that they were triggered by another. So we. We study how how is this probability uh, function, and of course we need to set a, a probability threshold in order to uh, to consider which event we will we be connected. So, in this sense, for different uh, values of this uh, raw threshold. We find that the earthquake, the number of earthquakes will decrease because you you will separate the background from the triggered events. The complex network, uh, it, this is an example of the complex network for these uh, parameters of thresholds, and also we can find different characteristics in complex networks. The 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 most common uh, characteristic is the degree distribution that indicates uh, how how are the 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 nodes of the complex network with different number of links between them. Also, we can find the hierarchy structure for for some earthquakes and the offsprings of this that will be the aftershocks, and also these aftershocks will produce another aftershocks. So, in this sense, we we have the the main the main objective of the ETAS model on Hawke's processes. So it depends of the level of the magnitude threshold of the sorry the probability threshold in order to, to find different complex networks. So from the complex network we can find different uh, measures and these measures could describe the topology that will characterize different events. So I show you uh, a little example of the complex network that is a cluster events and we we can find for each node or of each earthquake will have different characteristic for example the degree is the number of links to each one node so as we can see the green dot is uh, the main shock and this main shock will produce uh, after shocks also, we can find the clustering coefficient that describes uh, triangles uh, produces in the complex uh, network. Also, the diameter. 
And so we can apply different uh, measures in order to, to characterize uh, these uh, cluster events. So as a conclusion, digital models let us identify background and triggered events of point process. Stochastic declustration allows to identify the aftershock sequence, and it's very important because when we analyze earthquake activity, uh, we need to separate what what are the background events at what what are the aftershock, and that aftershock will describe the characteristic of the tectonic plates and the rupture in 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 the ser in the in the behavior of the location of the main shock. Etal models requires a long catalogs in order to have a better results. So we can use three graph representation that will help us to identify offspring generations. And finally, complex network could characterize seismic regions by means of their complexity measures. So we will continue with this uh, study in order to, to find different regionalizations for Mexico, because Mexico is a very great uh, country. So we need to apply in a local uh, places this, this uh, analysis. And for your attention, thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for this very interesting uh, work. Congratulations for that. And uh, also congratulations to, uh, to Max and, uh, and Jan Gan. So there are them for questions because you you you, you finish too soon. <laughs> so we have time for many questions. So if anybody has some any questions, please directly either. Ah, now I can see you raise hands in the icon. So Colin, please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, uh, Carlos. Really, really nice work. Uh, loved it. Um, I, I was just wondering. I mean, have you tried to? combine the network representation with some sort of spatial graph because I guess somehow that's that that that's really the kind of interesting question as to how these um, how local or long range these sort of triggered events are is that something you've kind of looked at or would be able to do in this model yes of course uh, as I told you uh we can, uh, from the complete network, uh, yes, for the complete network, we can uh, take the biggest component and the biggest component, uh, we are thinking that this biggest component will be a cluster part of the network and this cluster should be uh, a main shock. So we will have different uh, main components in the complex network. So in order to, 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 to choose the isolated uh, after chucks. So in this sense, we can do and analyze the topological structure. So this is a very interesting idea and, and it's a, a, a new, new way to, to, to study this. There are few works on them, but uh, it's it's very good apply this to Mexico because in Mexico okay. there is few works about that. Okay, okay. Uh, Carlos, if I can uh, add on, on on Colin, I think that uh, I, I think I, Colin was asking, or maybe I have a different question or the same question as Colin. Colin was asking whether you can wrap this complex network in the in the in the geographical uh, yeah map of of Mexico. Yes, and, yes, uh, it, it, it can. From, from, from your answer, it was not clear. Like, for instance, if you plot this, or maybe put, put another graph. Yes. Please. Sorry. Yes, this, this distributed along the Mexico. Along the Mexico, what? Uh, map? Yeah, but I think it would be very cool to have the map of Mexico. And then this network on the uh, geographical map of Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a maybe maybe for analyzing it, anal analyzing it maybe doesn't give you any information, but from a visual point of view, I think it, it would be much better, right? Yes, 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 yes of course. I think that was a uh, colleague's uh, question. Yeah, I think so because I guess I'm just I, I I'm wondering how long range. The yeah, triggering mechanism yeah. is, and it probably varies. I guess uh, there's probably a lot of additional information in this network, and you know, little. I mean, yes. so people draw these sort of networks for climate yeah. problems as well to try to find teleconnections. You know, even basically 
kind of trying to represent uh, kind of long range interactions. It can be a useful way to kind of combine the network and the spatial. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I agree. Very good. Uh, more questions? Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Um, go, go ahead. Uh, Carlos, it, how, how do you decide whether a shock that happens, or actually any sort of event, but let's, let's stick to the earthquake example. How do you decide whether a shock that happens um, soon after another shock is, a, is an offspring shock, or whether it's just a new parent shock? Yes, by means of the ITAS model, uh, the ITAS model calculates the probability of uh, some events are uh, are from background. So this is an internal uh, procedure of the ITAS model when we calculate uh, the yes this one, the probability that an event is generated by the background and what events are 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 offsprings and and from what from yes from what even comes this offspring so that is in a uh, internal iteration steps of the ethals model okay and can you can you then does that allow you to presumably that only allows you a probabilistic identification of real data as either parent or offspring so you're yes. assigning probabilities okay understood <laughs> thank you well, Very worry. good. Uh, more, more questions? If not, I don't see uh, hands being raised, either the human hands or the, or the icon hands. So if no more questions, shall we thank uh, Carlos for this fantastic uh, talk? Thank you very much, Carlos. Thank you. So now let me stop the recording.